Well, hello there and welcome to another edition of the Big Q. This week we are talking about entrepreneurship and that's why I'm joined by Pamela Munyana, who is the country director for Idea for Africa. Of course, she'll be telling us what Idea for Africa does. And of course, they are the national host for the uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week that is expected to kickstart in the country this week. Thank you very much, Pamela, for making time to meet us and welcome to our show. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. So entrepreneurship, as we all know, of course, is the cornerstone for any growing, you know, um, economy and global stability. But of course, it is also a sector that we have seen young people struggle with quite a lot. We've seen startups come within a year or two, you know, they fail. Uh, how do you think we can remedy this ahead, even as we talk about entrepreneurship? Week? How do you encourage the young ones and tell them it's okay, you can start, you can fail, but you can maintain the pros? How do you do it? Yeah. Um, I think there are different factors that contribute to that. Um, I do think that having, I mean, being a young person myself and a young entrepreneur now, um, starting um, a project very soon, mm. I can see where gaps are. And also being in um, the Global Entrepreneurship Network, I can mm. see other factors that contribute to um, improving the entrepreneurs' um, ventures um, in other countries as well, um, in, the, in our network of the Global Entrepreneurship um, and so some of those factors, I would say that uh, it's a collaborative approach um, that needs to happen in, in terms of um, having um, the government, the policies need to really um, uh, help entrepreneurs. Um, and, and the institutions that are in place for that need to do what they're supposed to do um, to be able to achieve the, the objectives. Um, now, when it comes to the entrepreneurs themselves, what I, I can say is the fact that um, we need um, more incubation incubators and we need a lot of accelerators as well. We do not have a lot so far in Rwanda um, and I think that's where a lot of people um, uh, face the issue. Um, yeah, I think so. It's, uh, it's many factors that can help entrepreneurs for them to have a sustainable growth over the years. In your opinion, of course, as an entrepreneur, as a young person as well, uh, we all know that when you finish school or rather what we are being told right now is mm. be job creators. But at the same time, I want to believe that there's a risk in encouraging young people to always be job creators, yet there's no platform for them to first have an experience, to first learn. Right. Do you feel we are jumping or we're just on the right path? Is it why we have fail, yeah. failed entrepreneurs? No, I, yes, I think, um, I mean, I wouldn't blame um, um, how Rwanda came about that because given the population of youth, how um, high it is, um, but also given the sense of urgency that was there right uh, 20 years ago, um, then it's understandable why that would be the case now. We, as the years go by, I do think it's up to us, not just the government. Obviously, the government has um, its, its, um, its role to play, um, but also up to us. So by us, I mean even um, an, an organization like um, Idea for Africa, it's a CSO, it's in the CSO. Um, but um, what we do is to create those platforms, right? Those space where entrepreneurs can be trained at a younger age. Um, what I'm saying is we actually target um, entre um, entrepreneurs, people who are passionate or students who are passionate about entrepreneurs um, when they're 13 years old, 18, and when they're in a safe environment mm. for them to try that out in their community. And um, we also provide to them um, you know, some sort of funding that is small, so not um, a, hot, a lot of risk yeah. um, and, and um, possibility still in, of return on investment. But then that way they already have gone through a business plan and, you know, um, business pitching. And so yeah. if we can have more of those, um, that would help. But um, I think the, the, the effort has to come from top, but also from bottom. And um, yeah, that's where it goes back to what I said before, Absolutely. the collaborative approach. But speaking of risks, of course, agriculture is a sector that many people see as a risk, you know, as a risk thing that no one wants to really tap into. But mm -hmm. I'm sure agriculture is one of the important places that we need to see young people, yeah. you know, young entrepreneurs getting into. Because right now when you talk about entrepreneurs, most people talk about innovation. Mm -hmm. I came up with this particular app. Um, I'm in charge of this, you know. Yeah. Tell us the importance of having entrepreneurs in charge of agriculture today, especially the young ones. Yeah, no, I think I think it's um, it's very important um, because um, innovation is good, um, but innovation and agriculture 
it doesn't exclude agriculture, you know, um, and you can you can actually find ways to 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 lies the two, um, you know, like ag agriculture um, or agripreneurs can come up with innovative ways to 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 succeed um, in their ventures. Um, but one of the things that in Idea for Africa we actually make sure to do is to encourage our entrepreneurs because most of these students are outside of Kigali. Um, and so that's the, really, the reality of their lives. Um, and so one of the things since I said that we, we uh, ask them to try, um, whether it's a product or a service in their community, to try it out while they're still in those communities. Um, and then we see where um, there, there are gaps and how they can um, improve those. Second, what we do is also to, to try and find um, people that can invest in them um, via our global entrepreneurship network. Um, but also via certain organizations that we that we get acquainted to during this week, um, because one of the roles that we do is to reach out to many organizations and ask them to um, host events um, in different areas. Um, so if there is a, an organization that um, or a development partner, for example, like AFDB, that has some projects that are um, regarding agriculture, then that's where we come in um, to yeah. Speaking of organizations that you know chip in or rather help, especially the young ones, let's talk about the banking sector, the mm. access to finance, which has always been a challenge for startups yeah. and for young entrepreneurs who are starting off. Did the banking sector really jump into such opportunities? Do it's they hard. help? <laughs> it's very hard. It's very hard. Um, you have to find to have a very uh, well. You have to f have a very good product or service. Mm. That's one. But you also have to be very aggressive as an entrepreneur, and you have to be have people that back you up. Um, so, for example, a in a platform like this, if we ask the Bank of Kigali to host an event, that's going to be easier on the entrepreneurs. Um, but that's because we jump in, yeah? Um, and because given the relation maybe we've created with Bank of Kigali. Um, now, one of the things that I believe is very important for us to start thinking about is to think about an angel investment network. Um, because that's, um, that's something, that an area that is like pretty much not um, uh, addressed in, in Rwanda. And so one of the things that we really believe is that that needs to happen in Rwanda where you see a lot of inv investors. Um, obviously, they have to come through organizations that are accredited to do that. Um, but where you see um, investors, whether it's the African Business Angel Investment Net Network or even EBEN that we actually have access to um, in our GEN network. Um, but you, know, you have to have that um, infrastructure as well to help entrepreneurs, not just the banks. And so, yeah. Collaborations and, um, of course, the business ecosystems. You know, it's one thing to hold a whole week of uh, entrepreneurship week. It's also another thing to uh, talk about it. But how do we ensure that these networks actually work, you know? Because I, as an entrepreneur, might come learn a few, two, three things. I go back with my idea and still go back at home and sit on it two, three years down the line. Yet there's a network that I could have used that would have boosted me in one way or another. How do you ensure that these networks and collaborations, basically the ecosystem keeps running around every time without necessarily waiting for the entrepreneurship week? Yeah. Um, so one of the things that um, we hope to be able to do in Rwanda is to have a global entrepreneurship network in Rwanda, so an affiliate. And so the purpose of that would actually be to strengthen the ecosystem of Rwanda, but not just in November during <laughs> one week. Um, because in other countries, um, so this happens in 170 countries, but in a lot of those countries, over 100 countries, mm. have a gen affiliate in their countries. And so what happens during that year is there are different events, um, some that um, uh, are based on, on um, celebration, that's the Global Entrepreneurship Week, but others that are, um, whose objective is, is, is um, uh, policy, um, and that those involve the ministerial, so startup ministerial, startup nations, um, and then you also have research. And so those ones will include um, CSOs, obviously, because that's, CSOs come in a lot in mm -hmm. research. Um, but to see um, the, the statistics of how the entrepreneurs in that country and um, the, the statistics of how policies are helping those. So pretty much to um, combine the two. So that's why we hope to, to, and also investment as well. So that's where the African Business mm -hmm. and Investment Network comes in and um, the European one um, and the world one. Um, and so that's where we, why we hope to f have an affiliate in Rwanda to be able to have now uh, a space or um, people, uh, operations that um, are responsible for that. 
um, throughout the year. Um, so yeah. Among the questions we have, because of course the Big Q gives opportunities to our viewers to ask questions, and of course among the questions we got was please ask her uh, the importance of critical thinking when it comes to being an entrepreneur, because it's one thing to be an entrepreneur, but if you can't think critically, if I should put it that way, what, why is it important to be critically? When you think critically, especially when it comes to businesses, what is the importance of that? Um, I think it's just really, it's the same as thinking outside of the box. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of group thinking, mm. and I think Rwanda is a, a, a population where people really, you know, someone has an idea and mm. um, another entrepreneur won't really think further, um, and they, they will just you know, add on one or two things on that. Um, but also I think a lot of people are not exposed um, because there, there is, again, I think there is, there is a, a huge power or a strength mm. in seeing how things are done um, in other countries and what you can learn, but also what you can avoid. Mm. Um, and so that's, I, I think not a lot of people take the time and that's where research comes in um, to, to uh, because research will improve the critical thinking. So if, if, you know, if the state or if, you know, policymakers say, say, say something or um, other sectors, um, uh, they, they say something is this way when it comes to entrepreneurship, then you know that's not the case. So maybe you can um, improve that way of thinking or you can come up with a, with a, with a venture, with an idea that um, improves that on a, on a long term. Would you say so there's a model for business entrepreneurs? Is there a model that one should follow? It's just a thinking, it's just a feeling that you grow up with. I, I think it's, mm -hmm. I think the, depending on the sector, um, so innovation, for example, there can be, um, you know, a certain, certain model. yeah, a model. Uh, so people think about, you know, the same things. So um, not, you know, you won't find people who come up with um, innovative ways um, when it comes to certain things, for example. Um, and, and so I, I think there is a model, but then also there is this hype. Um, in Rwanda of uh, I want to be an entrepreneur, exactly. you know, uh, <laughs> I want to be an entrepreneur. I have no idea what that takes, I but know. I want to be an entrepreneur just because it's cool to be an entrepreneur. Um, and and that it, it, people don't know the failures that um, that comes with. People haven't done the research again that they are supposed to be making. People don't have mm -hmm. the connections they're supposed to, to be having or they don't ac at least um, go aggressively about making those connections. Um, because you can start from somewhere, you can always start from somewhere, depending on the sector you want to start your idea or your product or service in. Absolutely. Before we go for a short break, maybe you could give us some of the priority areas you feel an entrepreneur should first focus on before you call yourself an entrepreneur or before you become a successful entrepreneur. What are the priorities that they should focus on, the young people that are looking, uh, watching this show right now? Um, I, think, I think it's knowing first your resources. Um, so first, do you know what your business plan is? Have you tried it out? Have you exposed yourself already? Um, I think it's also collaboration again. Mm. Um, it comes in, um, but resources come first. And resources come in many ways, not just financial resources, but um, who am I going to be talking to? Do I know anyone in the job market? Um, and, and, and as well, um, are there any organizations out there that um, are going to help me? Do I have experience in this field mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I am? Um, working in one of the things that we are doing in Idea for Africa is actually we are very keen on, 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 on hiring very young people because we want them to already know, um, be accustomed to this uh, field and this area. Um, and so it would be very easy for someone, or easier at least for someone like that who's been exposed, um, who's gotten, who, uh, gotten, who has gotten that exposure to the, to the um, international exposure as well that they, they, they need to have but also who knows like the, the gaps in each um, area, yeah. Well, we do take a short break and of course, like Pamela has just rightly put it, entrepreneurship is just not a name, but it is also work that you put into that. Of course, to give it the big cue, we come back and we dive into what the Global Entrepreneurship Week will be doing for the young ones and what we can expect from it. Welcome back and thank you very much for choosing to stay with us right here on Rwanda Television. Of course, we are on the big queue and I'm joined by the country director for Idea for Africa, Pamela Munyana. And of course, we've been talking about entrepreneurs and we're still talking about the global entrepreneurship that is slated to take place in the country and how it is helping the young people. Pamela, tell me about power that is about to be launched in the country during the global entrepreneurship. What is POWER, first of all? Yeah, uh, POWER is an acronym, stands for Pan-African Women Accelerator. 
Yeah, um, and so it's an idea that we we had with um, two women from um, Idea of Africa co co started it, uh, co founded it, um, with two women um, that I met in in Istanbul some time ago. Um, so when I went there, I met these ladies who told me that they wanted to to do something um, to help women entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so um, it occurred that at the time we had been, in Idea Africa, we had been also working um, with women cooperatives. So we not only work with youth, but one of the other projects that we started is to um, work with women cooperatives. And so during that time, we noticed and we observed that a lot of um, women are marginalized. Um, mm -hmm. Um, especially the ones that live outside of Kigali. Um, you find that they have more issues than women here in Kigali, but also um, definitely more than men um, <laughs> anywhere. Um, you find that they don't um, the access to, to the uh, bank is, 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 is very hard. Mm -hmm. So the bankable projects and you know what they have, there is a huge gap in that. Um, and so we just um, started, we just decided to start um, that initiative um, with the ladies and so because these are gen leaders in other countries mm. um, we wanted to have it as a pan-african initiative so what will this power what will it do what will the pan-african uh, women accelerator what will it do for the women for um, the continent yeah so it's an accelerator mm -hmm. um, but um, one of the things that we want to do is to work with incubators, so in sort of in a funnel. Um, so one of the things that we've done here is to work with um, uh, uh, the Rwandan Chamber of Women Entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. uh, Women Empowerment, mm -hmm. um, RCWE. Um, and what we wanted them to do is to help us in finding 15 women um, that we that we could we, we could work with. So we do not just look um, for the women um, anyhow. Uh, we've been working with certain organizations. We've also approached Profam and um, NWC because what we want, the, the, the structure that we want to go about is a, a funnel. So we find 15 women um, from incubators and then we you know, get them to uh, the next level because again, we want to avoid that problem that you earlier mentioned of, of um, business failing Thinking, after three yeah. um, to five years. And so that's, that's the, it's that vision that we have now. The first court is going to be launched in Rwanda um, on Friday. Um, and we've already selected, we've been in the process of selecting the women, we've approached uh, them um, and uh, we want to have certain, some of those women at the um, launch. Mm. Um, and so what we want to do is now that we have the first cohort, um, we already have a business, um, the business lean-in platform mm. um, that we will be using. Um, so once the cohort succeeds in Rwanda, we have to showcase the results in next year in another conference that will happen here. Um, so we have a year um, to help these women to go through a certain um, mentorship and yeah. whatnot. And, um, but in the following years, then we have to include women from other countries. So our vision on the long run is that power would not work only in Rwanda, but also it was also would also work in in other countries where Jen is mm. actually um, ah. operating. Absolutely. We have yeah. a question here from Rogers. He says, according to statistics from the International Finance Corporation, women in Rwanda contribute to the 30%, uh, of course, of the GDP, while female entrepreneurs account for 42% of their enterprises. However, most of the women are still in informal businesses. How do we change this? How do we ensure that the women back in Changugu are not left behind? Yeah, exactly. Mm. I think um, we are very keen on also approaching rural, um, women that live in rural areas. Um, and so that's why we've approached again NWC and POFAM because they're already working with women um, in those areas. And um, we noticed that a lot of women actually in the inf um, have informal businesses. Mm -hmm. And one of our key um, objectives um, or key goals is to allow them to have the access to market. Um, but also the bank of projects, as, as I said again. Um, so um, one of the things that we'll be doing um, in order to uh, allow them to have access to market is to use again that platform mm. that we have. So that not only do can can they th would they thrive here, but also in the international mm -hmm. market. So that means um, if um, we have access to South Africa, for example, and, and a certain woman has. Um, uh, an idea or a service that she's having here, but that could be more successful in another country, mm -hmm. then we want to be able to facilitate that because we already have connections in those countries. 
And so, yeah. So do you believe this will also uh, bridge the gender gap that's already there? Because we know most of the businesses that are out here are run by men. Yeah, no, uh, we believe that. We believe that um, because we, we are focusing on a lot of sectors. Mm. So um, because we are focusing on a lot of sectors and we want um, these women to, to, to be able to have access to market mm. in, in these different sectors, yes, we believe it's going to bridge that gap. Talk about the importance of mentorship when, you know, through the whole cycle of entrepreneur. Is it really important or can I be a one man standing and run my own show? No, <laughs> it's not. It goes back to the collaborative approach. Yeah. Um, even um, I think myself, I, uh, being a person or young person mm -hmm. um, that has been only in the job market for a few years, I still believe in, in, in seeking out someone who can be a mentor, not just in work, but I even in other areas, mm. um, because it's very trivial to your success in all the areas of your life to ac approach and hear for someone who has been in that area, who has had experiences in mm. that area, to avoid to make the same mistakes, but also to learn how to, you know, succeed a bit faster, maybe. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now let's talk about global entrepreneurship. What is this all about? I'm sure this is not the first time that you're holding it. How many years has it been running? And how does it help the entrepreneurs grow? Yeah, so um, it's the global entrepreneurship we has been running in the, w in the other countries for several years um, now. Mm -hmm. um, but in Rwanda, it's been uh, for about uh, five, um, six years that we've, we've been in this area, IDF Africa being the host. Um, at first, we were working with Babson College in, in the US. Um, and so um, now we have um, connections with Wheaton College. Um, and so we wanted to, to help people um, in the Rwandan ecosystem as well, because we still don't have a Rwandan affiliate, though we're working on that. Now, what the Global Entrepreneurship Week is about, it's about celebration, so celebrating the entrepreneur, yeah. um, because um, there are other areas, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. um, but the Global Entrepreneurship Week itself is about celebrating the entrepreneur, um, by ha but also allowing um, organizations to go to citizens mm -hmm. instead of the other way around. That's why we ask organizations to host events um, and preferably not just in Kigali but also in other parts of the country and so that's really what the Global Entrepreneurship Week is about. So when I attend the Global Entrepreneurship I meet uh, a, say a partner one way or another. Do I report back to you? How do you help me merge this partnership so that I can grow and our company can grow together? Um, I think um, when it comes to different events, because it's a week full of yeah, events, yeah. um, organizations are responsible for how they um, go about those events, but we help them in terms of organizing the events and whatnot, and, and in terms of collateral as well, if we can provide um, anything, because we want to not only um, help the entrepreneurs, but also really show credibility and the visibility of those organizations um, regarding the work they're doing with entrepreneurs. Um, one of the things that we want to work more on, and that's the reason why we wanted to launch the power, is not just to have conferences, um, because we've observed there are many conferences in Rwanda, uh, but um, the, the results of those are usually a bit blurry. Yes. Um, so that's why we want to watch to, to start um, power because the theme is women premiers, yes. um to have something concrete um, to give to our people um, and depending on other um, themes that we will have in the future we would also continue to find something that is concrete and so that we not just have a conference. So as we sum up in two three seconds why should I participate where should a young person watch this participate in this entrepreneurship we cannot just sit at home. Yeah <laughs> because there is nothing uh, they gain in sitting at home <laughs> but um, I think in going in, in, in going in uh, such an environment not only do you have um, opportunities to network mm. but also to find people who might be interested in your area to find investors mm. um, people who can invest but also entrepreneurs that you can collaborate with again um, in a certain sector um, so yeah well thank you very much Pamela for making time thank to you as well. of course good work that you keep doing there thank you so much well I have been speaking to Pamela Munyana is the country director for idea for Africa and of course they are the national host for the global entrepreneurship week that is mostly focusing on the young ones and ensuring that they are showing them the right path and that some of our entrepreneurs are not failing but actually growing to be part of the global market. So do keep it the big key and do remember to keep sending in suggestions on who you want to see on the show. My name is Fiona Mbabazi.